Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to actually complete uh, this gradient projection algorithm, or how to deal with this uh, problem that we've been coming up with, uh, which is that you know after taking a step, um, you might find that you get into a spot where you can't find a feasible direction anymore. So how do we resolve that? Um, that's what we're going to look at now. So let's cross over to my slides. Okay, so this is completing the gradient projection algorithm. So here's the um, here's the problem that we get um, is that you, you find that you would have found if you continued on the calculation from the example in the last video that we get stuck uh, after a step um, and that uh, uh, we, we can't find a new feasible direction. And that can also happen when you get to the minimum or it can happen when you get stuck in a corner. Um, uh, so getting stuck in the corner is the sort of thing uh, that happens uh, in this little toy example that I gave you here before. So we took a step from X naught in the steepest descent direction to end up on the boundary uh, of my uh, feasible set. Uh, so that's that point X1. Uh, and then we took another step then along the constraint from X1 to X2, and we ended up in this corner. And the point of being at that uh, point uh, X1, uh, uh, at that point X2, sorry, was that I'm on the corner of constraint two uh, and constraint three. So both of those constraints are active uh, at that point. And so you can see just by looking at this picture that there's nowhere else that I can go uh, that will um, continue to minimize that function that also has constraint two and constraint three be active. I can't do any better. And in fact, I can't do any, uh, any better along constraint two than being at this point, right? But I can go um, closer towards a, um, towards the global minimum by heading along constraint three, right? So how do I do that? I need to relax a constraint, right? There's no feasible direction that I can move in uh, while I've got both of these constraints active, two and three. So I need to relax one of them. So I need to do something uh, you know, that's, um, uh, that gives me a bit of uh, more mobility to move along um, constraint number three. And so that's what, we, um, and so that's what we're, we're looking at here. So how do we do that? Fortunately, there is a theorem um, that comes to our help here. So let's let um, uh, some point uh, X uh, uh, in my feasible set have an, active, have an active set of constraints, right? So it's got P constraints. So that means you know, in that last example, um, the, set, uh, the active set was, you know, two, uh, it was two, three. So those are the two um, uh, constraints that were active. Um, and the theorem says that X is a local minimizer if and only if negative F is in the convex cone uh, of the gradients of my constraints. And so there's that idea of the convex cone and uh, the negative gradient of my cost function being in the convex cone of the gradient um, of my constraints. Um, yeah, and that means that uh, the way that you can uh, reformulate this, and hopefully this looks a little bit uh, like Farkas's lemma, uh, again, which, you know, that uh, X is a local minimizer if and only if there exists some omega such that a particular, um, you get a particular solution of equations. So it exists an omega that, pot that is positive, such that N transpose times omega is equal to negative gradient F of X. So I want you to, you know, this is essentially another statement of oh, Farkas's lemma coming back again. And the big idea is this one about negative gradient of F being in the convex cone of my active constraints. So let's come back to this picture, right? So at this point X2, what direction is negative gradient of F? Well, that's heading in the, uh, the direction of steepest descent, right? So it's heading from X2 towards the, uh, towards the minima. That's my steepest descent direction. Now, is that in the convex cone um, of these two constraints? So what is the convex cone um, of constraint two and constraint three? Well, it's exactly this region, you know, that contains the green uh, and everything else. So it's that region that's bounded by those two constraints. Now, negative gradient F, F of X, the steepest descent direction clearly points outside um, of that convex cone. Which is why we know that X two is not the uh, is not the ultimate minimizer uh, for this problem. It doesn't point. You know, we would need the uh, gradient F, negative gradient f of X, the steepest descent direction, to point into um, the convex cone, and it doesn't. So we can keep moving here. So that tells us that we can keep going. Um, and importantly, I've actually got something um, from Farkas's lemma. You know, this um, bit here 
that I can check, right? So if I can find uh, an omega uh, that solves this linear, uh, this set of linear equations here, it solves this matrix equation, right? And if that omega is positive, then that means that X is a local minimizer, right? And if not, uh, then it's not. So basically what I need to do, this gives me a criterion that I can use to check um, uh, and that's form this set of equations, uh, solve it and check that, uh, and check that omega, uh, check whether omega is positive or negative. And so that um, is what we can do here. So this is a, so I won't prove this theorem, by the way, the theorem is not uh, that long to prove. Uh, you can check out the, uh, the theorem in the notes. Um, you, you know, it, 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 hopefully it seems familiar to you from um, all of this discussion we've been having about KKT, Farkas' learned things like this. Um, and, you know, indeed that's what comes into the proof. So check that out. But let's see how this works in practice. So we found uh, when we were computing one step of our steepest descent, um, uh, sorry, of our um, conjugate directions algorithm before, we found this, um, this new point X1 which turns out to be you know, 26 over 11, 10 over 11, 15 over 11, zero. And we wanna check whether this is a minimizer of the problem. So what are we gonna do? Uh, we're gonna solve this equation, you know, this one that's written here, M transpose omega equals negative gradient f of x. So we need a few things. So let's remind ourselves what the matrix M is. So it was formed from uh, the gradients of my constraint functions, which was that. Uh, I'm also uh, going to need gradient uh, of F evaluated at X1, right? Um, that, you know, you can uh, just compute that. I'll just write out what it is. Uh, it turns out to be, doesn't turn out to be that, it turns out to be uh, 30, 20, 30, negative 33 uh, over 11, right? So that's just plugging, uh, just calculating grad F uh, and plugging this new point X1 into it and you just get that. Um, and then what I need to do now that I've got that, um, I need to solve M transpose omega uh, is equal to negative uh, gradient F evaluated at X1. So if I solve that, uh, then that gives me, um, uh, and that gives me some solution omega. What does that solution turn out to be? Well, that's just a system of linear equations. Um, you can go and solve that pretty easily. The solution turns out to be this. So it turns out to be negative 10, negative 10, negative 83, that vector all divided by 11. And the point about that is that that uh, is definitely not a vector uh, that is positive. Every entry in that vector uh, is negative. Um, so, you know, that's, um, uh, uh, we need everything to be uh, positive. Uh, for uh, this point x1 to be a true minimizer. Um, so I know that x1 not a minimizer, which means I need to keep going with my gradient projection algorithm. So what do I need to do there? Well, clearly this is telling me uh, that my constraints here, you know, my, uh, my active set of constraints, which was constraint one, two, and six, which formed this matrix M, that's too strict. I need, to relax, I need to relax that. So how do we relax um, these constraints? Well, here's a heuristic. Basically, the idea is that we look at this omega. So let's, um, let's remind ourselves what, uh, what omega is. I'll just write it out here again. It was negative uh, 10, negative 10, negative 83 uh, in, that, uh, in that last example. Uh, we basically admit the, uh, um, you know, the most negative, the constraint corresponding to the most negative um, element of that omega. All right, so when I calculated that omega, I got, you know, the third entry in this is much more negative uh, than, the, than the previous ones. And if you remember where this comes from, you know, this, um, these refer, each element in this omega refer to constraints. So this is constraint one, the first entry, Constraint two is the second entry, and it was constraint six uh, that is that third entry. So what this is telling me, the heuristic here is telling me to eliminate 
uh, this constraint. And I want to get rid of that and I want to form a new matrix M. So in able to do my gradient projection algorithm again, I need to eliminate uh, that third row from my matrix M, which is uh, equivalent to eliminating or relaxing that sixth constraint. So I don't need to demand uh, that um, X4 is positive anymore. So my new M is going to become, well, it's just the first two rows uh, of, that, of that matrix. So my matrix M uh, had constraint, the gradient from constraint one, right? The gradient from constraint two and the gradient from constraint six in it. I'm eliminating the last one. And so M is just going to be two, one, one, four, one, one, two, one. So that's just constraint one and two, constraint two being in there. What can I do then? So once I have that, uh, once I have that M, what I would do is I would form uh, V naught is the null space of this new M. Right? So find the null space uh, of that new M. Uh, and then PS is going to be V naught times V naught transpose. Right? So find the null space of the new M, uh, uh, formulate this new projection matrix, uh, and then the new U uh, is going to be uh, negative PS uh, times the gradient uh, of uh, times the gradient of F uh, evaluated at X two. Now it will be to get my, I think that notation is correct. Uh, yes, it will be. Right, so it's the same, it's the same procedure as I did before. I just have a new matrix M now. And the effect of this is that I've relaxed my, um, I've relaxed my second constraint, right? So I've, I've relaxed my, my sorry, my um, sixth constraint, uh, my constraint that um, uh, uh, the x um, the x4 has to be exactly equal to zero, right? So I'm now allowing that to be uh, that to not be an active constraint. So coming back to my picture here, what would go on um, in this in this picture um, is I calculate u equals zero, right? Uh, the steepest ascent direction is not in the convex cone here, um, so I find a constraint to relax. The constraint that I'm going to relax is going to be constraint two. So I'd remove that row from my matrix M and that allows me to move along constraint three towards the, where the true, uh, towards the final minimizer is. So that's the idea. Um, this we can all encapsulate in a full theorem. So this full theorem sort of describes uh, that full idea um, where the thing that's uh, put in here is this new this new heuristic uh, where I um, remove, you know, where I remove the jth row uh, from M uh, and then I can, you know, this allows me to go again. So this, this theorem tells me what to do uh, when U is equal to zero, right? So when U is equal to zero, uh, it's telling me when we solve this equation, we form a new matrix M where I omit the most negative uh, the, the constraint corresponding to the most negative entry of that omega. Uh, and then I can uh, do my uh, uh, gradient projection algorithm again. And that's it. That's the missing piece. And that's the something special uh, for our gradient projection algorithm. So with that in mind, we can now write down um, a completed, you know, a full gradient projection algorithm. So this is a big looking algorithm. Right, this is um, looks a lot bigger uh, than what it was before. But essentially, all I've done here is I've formalized the stuff from earlier. So instead of looping from um, uh, from zero up to ninety nine, I now execute this loop uh, while omega uh, is uh, is non is non positive. Right? I keep doing this stepping until I um, uh, until I can't step anymore. Uh, this stuff is exactly the same as what we had in the incomplete uh, gradient projection algorithm. The new bit uh, of this algorithm, right, that's just um, formalizing the stuff that, uh, that's just formalizing creating PS. The new bit is this section down here, right, so let's, uh, let's highlight that. This new section, this is what happens uh, when u is equal to zero, right? So here, uh, this is what happens when u is equal to zero, we have to formulate this new matrix 
um, or, or this new matrix equation, M transpose omega equals steepest descent direction. Uh, solve that, eliminate the eliminate one constraint, chuk, 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 uh, and we get a new, uh, we can take another step. That's the, uh, uh, that's the picture. And that finally uh, is the full gradient projection algorithm. Again, there's a lot of mathematics underlying this, but that picture that we started off with remains, that's the idea here. So the only thing we filled in the piece here, uh, the missing piece of is how to, um, uh, is how exactly to relax constraints such that we can get out of corners. Um, and that's it, that's the gradient projection algorithm. So all that remains now is for us to do uh, one more example to see how the full thing works uh, in practice, put it all together, um, and then that's it. You've, um, you've understood the whole thing um, and we're done.